This is it, the second annual Mighty Marvel Convention on, on April 23rd, 24th, and 25th in New York City. This is Stan Lee talking, and you are there. Now, I'll shut up and give you a chance to see what was happening. We start off with me signing autographs after making a speech. Here we go. Is Cassell running for governor? He wants to run for governor. He's a he wants to get to That's a better job. <laughs> she run for president. Oh, it's not good. I, I got a few votes in the last presidential election at some colleges. It was funny, you know, some kids gave some write-in votes. I think I got 23 votes. It wasn't quite enough to carry the nation. Are you thinking of a live Spider-Man series? A li oh, yes. Yes, we are. Can you, can you tell me what you're doing today? Are you Where are you today? Uh, this is the second annual Marvel Comic Con. This is the second year I've been here. Okay, you having a good time? I'm having a fantastic time. This is what I live for. You read Marvel comics, I take it? I read all kinds of comics, but mostly Marvel. Yeah, they're my favorites. What's your favorite character? Ugh, oh, Ben Grimm the Thing. Right. And why is that? I don't know. It's just his personality and, like, you know, what happened to him. He was turned into a monster and it wasn't his fault. And I like him. And, and who's your fam favorite artist? Oh, Dave Cockrum. He does the X-Men. He's got to be my favorite. And Marvel comic? Yes. And who's your favorite character? Uh, uh, Avengers. I like Which one of the Avengers? Captain America. Captain America. And what's your favorite? The Falcon. Avengers. The Falcon? Yeah. Yeah, I like the Falcon a lot, too. Okay, how about you, young man? Come on through here. Are you having a good time today? Yeah. Yeah? And uh, do you read Marvel comics? Yeah. Yeah? Who's your favorite character? Oh. Uh, Spider-Man or Iron Man. How come? And why do you like Spider-Man? Well, I don't know. I like his comics. He's, he's good. He's a good character, yeah. huh? Okay. Okay, wh what's your favorite character in Marvel Comics? The Hulk. The Hulk? Yeah. Why is that? Speak up. Well, I get a kick out of it. He's strange. He's different, you know, from other, other heroes. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the Hulk, there he is. Now, he may not be flesh and blood, but this is the closest we were able to come to him in a short time. I want to tell you, he was one of the hits of the show. Whoever is inside of him sure did a great job. He didn't beat up more than a few kids. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Archie Goodwin, the new editor-in-chief at Marvel Comics, and we're here to interview him. Do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, what differences do you find uh, in working at Marvel? And how is it different from working at uh, Warren? Uh, chiefly, um, the difference in Marvel has always been Marvel has a much looser approach to comics. Uh, with Marvel's whole system of the writer doing a synopsis, sending it to the, uh, the artist to break it down, sending it back to the writer to dialogue the artist's picture, you get much more of a... Uh, a give and take, a sense of spontaneity, and even kind of a tension in the work, or the uh, the writer may not always know exactly what the artist is giving back, but then he takes it and goes with it. I think that's been Marvel's big asset, is uh, the spontaneity of method, the way Marvel works. Mr. Goodman, I've seen scripts that you've written where you have thumbnail sketches of the entire page laid out on the back. Are you going to stop doing this, or are you going to keep on playing uh, out the story for the artist. Occasionally we'll come up with a situation where we'll be using an artist who needs a script. Whenever I do a script, yes, I usually work that way. I try to uh, work it out in visual thumbnails myself to pace it, to find out where I'm going with it. I then give that to the artist, not as a, a rigid rule that this is the way it has to be done, but more as a suggestion of what my thinking is. So if it helps the artist, fine. Generally, I think artists feel like if they can see something visualized, I think it makes the artist feel a little more comfortable, even if it's something that they wind up not using. Right. A uh, question I'm sure many of our viewers will be interested in. Um, what do you think is the best way for an uh, aspiring artist or writer to break into professional comics? Probably uh, the first thing is I, I think you almost have to be in New York or able to come to, to New York constantly. You can send in work, you can mail it in, and eventually we get around to looking at it, 
we can try to make some small criticism, but really the way to get in, you have to keep coming around, keep showing your work, trying to be available, getting to know people in comics. Uh, you really have to be terribly persistent. Uh, if, if a person isn't persistent, generally they, they probably will never make it in. But it, mostly it's persistence and availability, besides being damn good. Is it a, uh, a buyer's market now? Are there openings for artists? Right now, it's... For anyone, I should say, for anyone that's good, there's always a place. Uh, right now, I think, they're kind of trying to level out the number of titles on the newsstands and things like that, so that we seem to have hit a period when uh, there's not a terrific amount of work available, but, but still, anyone good, there's always a place for them. What about reprints? Are you going to cancel any? There are about five reprint titles now being considered for cancellation. We'll probably always do a certain number of reprints. In fact, a, a book like Marvel Tales, the Spider-Man reprint, uh, does almost as well as the original Spider-Man. There's, with comics you get, you may have many long-term fans of a character, but you also get sort of a turnover readership where uh, every three years or so, you know, there'll be a new group of young fans coming up, other people will begin moving away, and somehow the old material, if they're interested in the character, is it's still of interest to them. So there will always be a certain number of reprints that we'll be doing because the demand is there. When you were born, you were mostly writing um, horror and supernatural stories, not Marvel it's superheroes. Which type do you prefer? Or... Depends. Uh, after about six months of writing superheroes, uh, you know, you'd love to do a vampire story or something. After six months of doing vampires, uh, you know, you'd love to do a superhero story. Or at least that's the case with me. Are you going to take over Dracula? No, no. Marv Wolfman is uh, doing Dracula and doing a beautiful job on it. Um, he's been far more inventive with what I consider what would seem to be a limited character. He's worked out, I don't know, constant variations with it, and uh, he has incredible things coming up. Uh, no, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it. Marv's doing a perfect job with it as far as... What are you as going as. to write? I'm not going to be writing anything. Uh, now that I've taken over Marvel's color books, I'm going to have my hands full. One, trying to get the books back on time. It's been an uphill battle ever since they began expanding. What do you mean, back on time? Well, comics uh, have to be done on schedule. Uh, what we're finding is we're currently because of the constant expansion of several years ago. Uh, we generally run three weeks to a month behind the kind of schedules that printers and engravers could really be comfortable with. Like if you go too far behind on a printing or engraving uh, schedule, you'll miss the shipping date, which means your comic won't get out on the newsstand at its scheduled time. So we've been getting hitting it just a little bit too close lately. And we're doing 40 titles a month which is, that's a lot of comics. So it, it's a considerable problem, but we are working on correcting that. So uh, it helps alleviate, you know, any problems. Once in a while, if a book misses a shipping date, that's why you can't find an issue. Uh, why do you think there's so few women in the creative end of professional comics? The few who are there seem to be in the production aspect. Right. I think that will gradually change. I, I think, obviously, uh, with any kind of business, there's probably always been a certain amount of chauvinism involved. Uh, but also, comics have always traditionally be, been uh, more boy-oriented than girl-oriented. Like, uh, Male fantasies. Yeah, yeah. And I think that will gradually change because there seem to be more female fans now. When they first started having comic conventions, uh, a girl was a rare sight at a comic convention. And I see more and more girls and all, and, you know, I welcome it. And I think as a result of more girls being in fandom, more girls being interested in comics, there'll gradually be an influx of uh, female artists and female writers.